the word on Twitter. I gave it away. What's the future of media? You are free to use the M word if you so choose. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I don't know if I'll go there. We'll see. Let's see. Let's see how we, we progress here. Let's start <laughs> before I wade into the metaverse. Um, I think what we know is going to happen immediately, or, or let's say the next year or so, uh, is that there's going to be a push to have more games uh, that are cloud-based that are untethered from consoles, which have dominated gaming for decades. So we know Microsoft is pushing this. Um, you, instead of being able to having to play all your games through Xbox, you can play digitally. Um, as, we're assuming here that uh, the other consoles will sort of follow suit here over time, where games will either be played uh, mobily on your computer or, or probably where we're headed is just through an app on your phone or on your PC, and then eventually on your smart TV, uh, where there will be no console. That's step one. Step two will be some form of augmented reality attached to the screen. So you're still playing the game on the screen, but you're wearing some sort of device, glasses, whatever, and you're having an additional layer of gaming where the characters are, you know, let's say in your room in addition to the screen. That's coming. We certainly know all the big tech companies, Apple, Google, Snap, Microsoft, they're all working on these VR, AR devices that will have some sort of gaming component. The last step, the real futuristic step here, will be bringing the game out of your house to the world. So let's say you're in your backyard and you're wearing a device and you're playing the game and the characters in the game are in the yard through the device, totally untethered to a screen. When will that happen? I mean, if you trust companies, they'll say five to 10 years. If you trust the history of VR development, we may be senior citizens by the time it happens. <laughs> well, I, and speaking of senior citizens, gaming, I know the total addressable market for gaming is massive. I'm not admittedly a gamer myself, not since the Nintendo days, the old school days. But, uh, you know, what are some of the other applications outside of gaming? Will we see this in the boardrooms? Will we have a VR TV set here one day where instead of uh, you sitting there in front of your piano, you're sitting here on set, although you're really actually sitting there next to your piano. Uh, what are the broader applications for this technology? Yeah, so that's where the metaverse kicks in, right? This was the big news this week. Mark Zuckerberg has said he wants to transition Facebook into a metaverse-based company within five years. He demoed this Horizons workroom application, which is not gaming, it's for meetings, but you have to wear the Oculus Quest 2 that costs $299 today. So that, that device has actually come down to a consumer price that's at least realistic for people to wear. So certainly you can imagine it in sort of a meeting setting. The other place is that it's very clear that where we're heading is fitness. There's a startup called Raptor that makes glasses that you can wear. Cyclists can wear it and your vitals and how long you've rode and other statistics. That's about $600 that exists today. There's another startup called Merge, Merge Lab. They have made an AR VR device that's reasonably priced under $100. Kids can wear it and it gives you virtual field trips. So you can, you know, pretend you're at NASA Space Station or other National Geographic animals and so forth. So education and fitness in addition to sort of your general enterprise meetings seem like other verticals where we're likely to see this technology apply. Huh. I like the idea of the fitness one, only if the avatar would actually do the workout for me. That would be <laughs> next level, totally worth $600 in my opinion, but I think that might defeat the purpose.